Today, Versus Live is destroying lifelong friendships in Harley Quinn versus Poison Ivy. Welcome to a brand new episode of Versus Live, where we embrace our inner anti-hero to determine who would win in a battle between DC legends. I am your host, Sam the Hammer Humphreys, writer of Harley Quinn for DC Comics. I'd like to welcome my guests today. Guys, thank you for being here. Sam the Hammer? Sam That's the Hammer Humphreys. Amazing. Absolutely. On my left here, I have the deadly Amy Dallin. On so my deadly. right, the malevolent Matt Key. Ooh, oh, I'll take good. malevolent. I'll take malevolent. Yeah. Now I'm getting a vibe a here that you guys have met before. You guys know each <laughs> yes. other. Yes. You uh, you have a show together. Yes. Yes. A little bit. Yes. Yeah. We know each other relatively Wednesday well. Wednesday Club on Geek and Sundry. Uh -huh. So you've done a lot of work. We usually fight to the death, but no, today, but today we are ready. Some war. I feel like this has I'm been brewing for, <laughs> for quite some time. I feel like we might break up the Beatles here today. Oh man. I don't want that to happen. I love doing our show. <laughs> then admit defeat now. All right. Bye. No, Matt, we really, really need you back. Okay, I'm back. We really need you back. All right, Amy, tell us who you're de defending here today and why you love this character so much. Okay, so both of today's characters are amazing, but there is a clear winner, and that is Poison Ivy. I am sorry, fighting. I thought you were going to say Harley. You did you? Yeah, sorry. Mm. Wow. Okay. Actually, right. it's Poison Ivy okay. uh, because she's just monstrously powerful and and she I love her because she is one of the all-time great uh, well-defined but still with a ton of internal uh, range anti-hero characters mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm excited to get into all that but Poison Ivy she's she's a legend for a reason a uh, legend for a reason that's a strong start Matt who are you you who are you here to defend I am here why do you care? Uh, to defend Harley Quinn uh, oh. the uh, the clown princess of crime uh, I think she is a uh, wonderful character who, uh, since her uh, inception, has very much come into her own. Uh, and while Poison Ivy is an exceptionally powerful character, uh, Harley Quinn has a lot, of, uh, a lot of good that she can do uh, in a battle. And she has the best writers, doesn't she? She always, oh, she this is so constantly unfair. has Absolutely the best does. writers. She constantly I may have has lodged a complaint yes. about the unfairness of this setup. It's fine. Well, you know what? I am the writer of Harley Quinn. So that means <laughs> what? Today, you are what? not getting any favors, Matt. You're going to have to fight for every point you're going to make. Oh, That's unfair see? To you. Where's Amy see? Chu? I need backup. <laughs> <laughs> so let's begin. Let's make this a clean fight, but leave everything on the table. Amy, what is your opening statement? Why Poison Ivy? All right. Harley and Poison Ivy are not only both amazing characters, but uh, best friends with a close relationship, depending on which version of continuity you go with. Uh, they love each other very much. They wouldn't fight. But if they did have to, it is absolutely clear what would happen. Harley has lots of pep, but Poison Ivy possesses a wide range of incredibly impressive powers. She has a mental connection to plants. The earth can rise up and swallow you. Uh, she has various versions. She has pheromone powers that influence minds. Uh, and devastatingly, quite recently, she reached into the power of the green and mind controlled the entire population of the earth, including most of the Justice League. So she has an infinite supply of backup. Uh, so yeah, I that's think a very good point. I didn't think about this, but there's a lot of plants on Earth, Matt. There are a lot of plants on Earth. How is Harley going to overcome this? Well, the, the, first and foremost, uh, Harley has the gift of her friendship with Poison Ivy, and in that friendship, she has re uh, received uh, uh, what are they? Uh, not uh, not toxins. When it uh, like a what's the word a I'm looking serum. for? A Antigens. serum. Got the serum. Anti venoms, serums. Mm -hmm. She is uh, she she's inocu inoculated to Poison Ivy's. Uh, pheromones and all of her plant toxins and everything else. So anything that Poison Ivy can do to anyone else, she, she can't really do to Harley unless she creates something else, maybe. Uh, and then Harley is infinitely uh, creative, she's infinitely strategic, uh, and she's she's not afraid to put herself out there. Like, she'll jump off a building and laugh all the way down. That's <laughs> true. Uh, and she can use anything as a weapon, so uh, Poison Ivy's like, here's a plant! She's like, rip, now it's mine! So. That Which, sounds like a good scene, her jumping off a building and laughing all the way down. Yeah. It should be in a comic you, book. It should be in a comic book. If only book. we knew somebody. I wonder if there's a writer in the room. Is there anyone in here who's... I doubt it. Yeah. Seems unlikely. 
So, it's very convincing arguments on both sides. I'm still very undecided here. Amy, now is your turn to talk about why Harley is ill-equipped to win this fight. She's just out of her weight class. Like, she's, she can think of new ideas, but Poison Ivy can keep throwing things at her forever. She can manifest super strength with the right plant coating. She can, I mean, when, when the entire environment around you and potentially an infinite number of mind-controlled backup minions are coming at you, there's just a limit to what you can do without any real superpowers. That sounds very convincing, Matt. What do you think? Why would Poison Ivy fail in this battle? Poison Ivy would, so first of all, uh, she, she's got plants. What, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> There's a lot of plants There's in the world, There's a lot of though. plants. There's, There's a, lot plants. a lot of plants. Tree, tree erupts out of the ground, Harley jumps off of it, whatever. Like, she can, she can run around all the plants. Uh, that's essentially all she's got. On top of, uh, she is very, um, she's e easy to egg on. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for there? Where like she you're, can- You're gonna infuriate her. Infuriate her, her, her game. taunt her, take mm -hmm. her out of her game. Mm -hmm. And who better to do that than a criminal psychologist mm -hmm. who that can get into her point. head mm -hmm. and just push all the right buttons, we've seen her do it before, and get and push Poison uh, Ivy off of her game. Wow. Can I counter? I, so it's Get true. She it. has that skill set. We've seen her use it very effectively. Uh, but Poison Ivy knows all those tricks. The same way that Harley is inoculated to a certain extent against some of her pheromone based powers based on exposure, she knows the inside of Harley's mind like nobody else in the world at this point. That so is a very good point. In the recent confrontations, uh, it is true that Harley was able to talk this. Uh, what's our spoiler policy? Uh, spoil away. Okay. Uh, in the recent Tom King written arc of Batman, where Poison Ivy mind controlled everyone on the planet. If you haven't read it, cover your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, Harley did talk her down. But first of all, Batman had to intervene to wake her up because Ivy got to her too. And uh, second of all, it still wasn't a winning victory in a fight. She convinced her to stop fighting. So unless we have a get out of fight free card, the advantage in the fight still goes to Ivy. All right, spoilers are over. <laughs> Okay, welcome back, everybody. So we've touched upon this a lot today. Harley and Poison Ivy, they have such a tight friendship. Which character is going to, ha is going to have what it takes to do what it takes to put this friendship aside and win this battle? I mean, Har like, Harley, no contest. Like, she's... You think Harley would, would, would kick the friendship to the side the fastest? Yeah, mm -hmm. I absolutely think so. I don't think she would want to, but if she's fighting, she's fighting for a reason, and I think that she would be able to look past that and 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 scrap and fight and do what had to be done. Like she's, I, they're both criminals, but she was a criminal with the Joker. Like of all the criminals to be teamed up with, a criminal with like the girlfriend of well, sometimes girl, she's grown into her own person, thankfully, but she teamed up with the Joker for a long time. Like, so you're right that she's very, very used to dealing with mixed feelings as she goes into a fight. Like that, Harley can do that in her sleep. That is a fair point. But depending on what the stakes are, Ivy, one of the reasons that she can be a villain is that she is capable of putting, if she thinks like the fate of the earth or the nature is at stake, like Harley's a force of nature, Ivy is all of nature. She's willing to see what Dang. she sees. You got <laughs> burned. The bigger picture. Dude, you're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> I, I, what can I tell you? I was, but they, it's on fire over here. They do have a deep love for each other in different versions of continuity. It plays out differently. So that bond is there, and I will agree that Harley's more used to dealing with that conflict, but Ivy still has that capacity to, to make, depending on who's the good guy in this fight, the wrong choice. I mean, that's a good point. Harley is uh, a, a wild card by nature. She's all over the place. Uh, by comparison, at least, Poison Ivy is more stable. Is that gonna work against her or for her in this fight? I imagine it might initially present some challenges as Harley's gonna be able to adapt to her different strategies, but I really think that overall, like she's just got so much at her disposal. She's got some other power she can throw at you if the first plan didn't work. And Harley also answer. has that. Harley also, she doesn't necessarily have the powers, but she has uh, in, an endless capacity for improvisation. She has an endless capacity for taking the environment and using it against her uh, opponents. 
uh, for uh, getting people on her side. I mean, she's got an entire army living in an apartment with her right now, like in a, in a, in a tenement building. Like, like, so like she's, she is a people person bar none. And all of those people have no immunity to Ivy's powers, just saying. Unless Harley can figure that out, which she totally could. She's she, a scientist. She's a scientist. She's a doctor. They're both and, scientists. She's and also she, a doctor. And she, like where Poison Ivy is not a, pe a people person, Harley is. Harley, oh, hey, chemist, I need some help inoculating all of my friends to Poison Ivy's uh, toxins. Can you help? I'm a chemist. Sure, I can. If you can do that with over-the-counter stuff, what would Bruce have been spending all his time trying to do for all of these decades of, of repeatedly attempting to counter her? Glad that we brought Bruce into this. Because, Let's talk about Bruce. Because Bruce who? <laughs> Bruce Wayne. A.K.A. Batman. A.K.A. Batman. Because Harley, uh, by Batman's own admission, is uh, one of the only villains who's gotten uh, that incredibly close to actually offing him until he was able to, uh, like in Mad Love, when he was like, hey, but Joker, Joker might want to be here for it, but she got close. If he hadn't been able to turn this her mind This isn't a killing what? Batman contest, No, though. I know, but Poison hasn't almost killed Batman, but Harley has. I feel like she's probably almost killed Batman a number of times. But we like know that Harley has. <laughs> <laughs> we know that Harley has. <laughs> I feel like uh, Poison Ivy almost killed Batman in No Man's Land mm. when she had that army of, of, they're almost like zombies, super soldiers infected with the plant pheromones that were at her command. Can, can Harley do that? Can plant pheromone control? Yeah, I haven't noticed. Did she well, do that? Well, no. <laughs> She's also not Superman and can't fly or shoot lasers out of her eyes. <laughs> like, what, what could Harley do against an army like that? Uh, well, we've, we've seen in uh, the Palmiati run where uh, uh, an alien crashed to Earth and became a cow and was chopped up and turned into meat and became an infectious zombie horde. She was able to defend herself against all of that on her own, and she laughed and ate pizza while doing it. She beat, she beat them with plungers in that run. So Pizza. She Amy. ate pizza I'm not and saying she's not going to have fun while she loses plungers. this fight. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're like, here come plant people, she's like, pizza, mmm, delicious, plunger, let's do it. So, I mean, I got to tell you, I was on the side of Poison Ivy, but then he brought up pizza. <laughs> and I pizza and plungers! Pizza. So, I feel like he right down the middle. He probably cause the ingredients on the pizza to, like, re-spark into life and then, like... No, nope, but, but Harley's inside. ahead of that. Harley's ahead of that. She's eating just just Canadian meat bacon. lovers, oh. meat, meat lovers, lovers only. <laughs> Who wants vegetables on a pizza anyway? Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. All right, guys. Keep pineapple off my pizza, you monster. For the people at home watching who are still conflicted and confused, what classic story for your character would you recommend to bolster your argument, Amy? I'm gonna lean most heavily on this most recent Ivy story. It was in Tom King and Mikkel Janin, Janin, uh, the uh, artist of that story. Great question. Uh, Sorry, Mike. <laughs> J-A-N-I-N. Yes. Uh, who illustrated that beautiful three-parter in Batman 41 through 43, Somewhere I want to say. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, again, is Poison Ivy uh, nearly winning ultimate victory over literally everyone until she is talked down, not physically defeated. You can also check out her solo series, Poison Ivy Cycle of Life and Death. Uh, which just is a great like opportunity to see what she can do on her own. Mm -hmm. Both great stories, very good stories, Matt. Um, I would I would definitely start with Mad Love. I think it's one of the best Batman stories out there. Uh, it definitely like sets. It's just such a classic story and it's a classic Harley story. I would absolutely start there. Um, the uh, then also the the Batman Harley Quinn, where we introduce her into the DC continuity, is a great story. Uh, and the Jimmy Palmiotti and uh, Amanda Connor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, that that entire run, like there's there's no Classic misses in all of that. Classic five year run, yeah, amazing run, yeah. Absolutely. Like I, it's it's hard for me to be like I've I've loved all the rebirth stuff, so like that's kind of I guess where I would point people to if they were like, oh, that's a lot. Five years is a lot to start. Just do it. You won't regret it. I yeah, mean, you won't regret it. Yeah. But yeah. These choices of stories. That's a lot. Go to rebirth and and read from there because that's that's been a fantastic run. Great stories, true also, classics. Also, the until, Sam, Sam the Hammer Humphreys run. Until. Which is fantastic. The Sam the Hammer Humphreys run, 
Which is stellar. I mean, everyone's been talking it's about everyone's the talking best about comic it. book ever made in America. Yeah, and, yeah. And everyone's that, saying it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. On a, Update on the a, wiki. On a metric of one to five stars, it gets seven. Easy. Seven? Seven stars. All right, I'll Yelp. take a seven stars. Well, yeah. enough flattering me for now. We can get back to that later, but it's time to mix it up with our wild card segment. Ooh. So I have some questions here taken straight from the Joker's deck. Neither of our guests have seen these questions before, and we're going to run through and see what each of these characters would do in these situations. Number one, why is your character a better foil for Batman, Amy? Ooh. A better foil for Batman. Mm -hmm. I think that Ivy makes a great foil for Batman uh, because they are each examples of dedication to an ideal and the way that, like, she shows off all the risks. Like, when he has to stop on this side of the line of humanity and not let his the ideal that he serves overwhelm his decisions, when she is in her villainous mode, she illustrates the other side where he's like, I can admire your dedication. I can admire what you believe in. I can admire that you're fighting for it, but I think you're making the wrong choices. And it illuminates that side of it. Very him. interesting. She has very strong, good motivations. Matt? Um, I think there's a there's kind of a similar uh, story to their to their origin in a, in a in a way in a way where like she she started off as a villain and has kind of grown into her own and while she's still an anti-hero uh, she's grown into a more heroic personality and in some of the origin stories that we get with Batman we see that he kind of to learn how the criminals operated like had a life of a criminal for a time mm -hmm. and then like, his obviously was always for a different, like, he had an, a completely different end in sight than, than she did. But there's a similar sort of, like, life track of experience of, like, learning how to be this hero. Yeah. So. I feel like Batman and Harley would have a fantastic friendship based entirely around complaining about the Joker. <laughs> yeah. Be like, oh, my God, his laugh, it's so annoying, oh right? Oh, my God, and right? And his suits, they oh. stink. They're yeah, the worst, and like he's so hackneyed with know. these just extra no, all the punching time. boxing gloves. I Come know. on, this is how you punish Joker in the afterlife. <laughs> yeah. Just make him listen in on that. That's perfect. So, uh, that that is his punishment. His <laughs> next trial, that's going to be his sentence. All right, wild card question number two. You brought up the anti-hero aspect. Why would your character be more successful at going straight, Amy? Ooh, why would she be more like what would make her succeed or what would make it easier for that to happen? Why or? would why would she be the better hero? Oh, because like and and Harley's in some ways doing better at like serving the common good here, but like if Ivy could get that that like what that sense of values in sync with what we as readers kind of wish that she would prioritize, she'd be unstoppable. She just mind controlled an entire planet. Be, like She's she, the the good that she could do with what she can do, working in balance with the earth. Like it, I mean, her her capacity, the things she could accomplish, are so incredible. So you're saying she'd be a good eco fascist? Is that what you're getting? If she at? could decide to just go with the eco part of it, <laughs> how much good could she do? Matt, Ch change up the means to how she gets to her ends of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why Harley would make the better hero? Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, she's she's already making headway that way. Like, I think that she um, she she's a better hero because she she has her she can put her heart in the game for humanity. Like, I think that there's an element of like sort of redemption that she sees. Um, like we, uh, I, th I think it was a, a an Amanda and Palmiata where they they had her meet Wonder Woman, and Wonder Woman's been like this ideal for her her entire life, but she like kind of. She used it to fight the bullies and all this other stuff, but like, I think that there's something to be said for her desire to be a hero, like her desire to do right, where uh, Ivy doesn't really necessarily have that. And because Harley is such a people person, uh, I, I think that there's a lot that could be said for, she, she loves to use violence, she loves the, the, these, the violent ends and the violent delights, but I think that there's an element of like, I wish that I wasn't that way, and I wish that I could find a different way. I wish that I could find that sort of middle road of only using violence when it was necessary, but being more of a peacekeeper and like a diplomat. And Oof. like we've started seeing yeah. some of that a little bit more in some of her more recent issues as she's grown from clown-themed psychopath to I now have my own agency and have broken away from the, that darn clown. And, uh, He's breaking my heart over here. Yeah. Maybe you should write Harley Quinn. <laughs> 
Hey, <laughs> if you if you need a second, I'll I will gladly do it. Not a chance. <laughs> All right. Wildcard question oh. number three. Why is your character the better friend in this friendship, Matt? Oh man, uh, that's really tough. <laughs> um, if they, they get a text saying nine one one, I need you and bring chicken soup. Who's gonna be there first with the hot sauce and the crackers? I think, I really, and this is honest opinion, I think Harley. And I think Harley would be the first one to answer that call because mm -hmm. she recognizes how good of a friend Poison Ivy has been to her. Like Poison Ivy in a lot of ways was the one who was like, leave that clown, he's no good for you, get away from him. She's like she was a friend to Harley when Harley didn't know she didn't have friends. I see where you're going, but you're making armies a You sure are. No, I know, I know. <laughs> but because of that, I think that it's now a bit reversed where I think Harley in this particular re relationship feels I owe it to you. You saved me. Now it's my turn to perpetually and always be the first one to save you. You think Poison is uh Poison Ivy is taking the back seat in this friendship, Amy? I think that uh it, I, I do love your idea that Harley will be very dedicated because she feels like she has sort of, she needs to pay Ivy back for the gift of friendship or the gift of love between them. Like, but I think that ultimately it does go back to the, like, Ivy's desire to sort of help Harley make better choices to save her from herself, uh, to be there for her, is for me the foundation. Like, and it, it for both of them, it, it sort of broke out of their, their villain shells where, like, Ivy found another person that she might care enough about enough to like not wipe all life out of off of Earth, you know, like an actual that brings out the humanity in her. Um, I don't think there are any limits to what Ivy would do if Harley needed her. Wow. Okay, it's a bold statement. <laughs> so there's been a lot said here today, but you have one more chance to persuade everyone at home to your side with your closing statements. Poison Ivy, Amy, go for it. It's just that. If they have to fight, Ivy's gonna win. Even if it's just the tree rising out of the earth to immobilize Harley, like she's just got more raw power. They, 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 like they're amazing friends, but they are amazing friends with very different combat and power abilities. The brute strength argument. It's very convincing. See, there's also another argument here, and that's the, uh, if I understand boxing correctly, the uh, rope a dope, where you allow the bigger opponent to thank you for explaining this because I have no idea what that is. Beat up on you a bit more, and then when they're at a weaker point or they've Tire exhausted them themselves, you exhaust the bigger mm -hmm. opponent. You uh, you you re you retaliate while they're at their weakest point. It's uh, it's Wesley verse versus Andre the Giant. It's uh, it's like throwing rocks. Jumping off of a cliff, choking him out until he falls. Like but that's Ivy's Harley Quinn. The, the thinker, the swordsman, and the big guy no, all at you're, once. You're not wrong on those things, but she is. But so is Harley. <laughs> Harley's a thinker. She's a strategist. She's cunning. She, she'll improvise her way through the battle. She'll break the glass and cut the. Like she, she knows her environment. And she'll play the environment against uh, Ivy. So we're, H Ivy is the environment. Uh huh. Harley's ripping the environment apart and using that against her. She's like chopping the arm off and then beating Ivy with it. It's interesting that you mentioned rope dope which was a tactic that Ali employed mm -hmm. in the famous battle called Rumble in the Jungle. Mm -hmm. Jungle is full of plants. Yeah, Ivy wins. Quite possibly, <laughs> but maybe not. Y'all at home, this fight has been brutal. I am exhausted, and to be real with you, my feelings are a little hurt. But now it's time to hear from you. I know you've been chatting. I know you've got opinions. It is time for you to make your voice heard. Cast your official vote in our Versus poll at dccomics.com slash versus. And we counted up all of your ballots from last week, and we have decided on a winner. Guys, drum roll, please. Nightwing. That was a very tough battle. I'm really proud of the way you guys really went for it, but we all love these characters so much, and I'm really concerned for your friendship and your careers together. I want you all to make nice and say one nice thing about each other's character. Amy? I mean, Harley's delightful. <laughs> it, she's just great. Like, it's, it's not about whether she's going to win any in some, like, power-off matchup. She is just, like, what you said about being a hero, she's inspiring because she's literally figuring out from scratch how to do this kind of do-the-right thing. And I, I love her. I will always love her. 
Didn't mention the writer. Matt, <laughs> all you need is love. One nice thing about Poison Ivy, please. Um, I mean, the writer for Poison Ivy is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> uh, uh, Poison Ivy was, uh, as I said earlier, one of my favorite things about her is the friendship that she has with Harley and the fact that when when Harley was suffering abuse, didn't see that she was in a bad situation, couldn't find her way out of that, uh, Ivy was the one like reaching down, saying like, here, let me, let me pull you up. Let me pull you up to this level. You don't need that clown. Stop it. You're a better person than this. You have your own agency. You have like, break away from this jerk and let's go be friends together. And uh, I don't know that Harley could have broken away from that abusive relationship without a friend like Ivy sticking up for her when Harley didn't even know she needed it. That is a very nice thing. And I might I've been a... waiting for this moment the whole time because I hate fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll be like, look, look. people that are like, I'll destroy you. Your character's great. <laughs> Your character's great. Please don't destroy me. Oh. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Please, Amy, tell the audience what you're up to, where they can find you. You can find me at Enthusiami all over the internet, and you can also tune into the show I do with Matt Key and our friend Talison Jaffe called The Wednesday Club on Geek and Sundry. Does Wednesday, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, it sounds hyper familiar to me because Matt, I'm also on. Tell them what you're doing. I'm, I'm tell on them it. Uh, you. Uh, you can find me also on Geek and Sundry uh, doing the Wednesday Club. That's also on ProjectAlpha.com. We're every Wednesday at seven, uh, Wednesday night at seven o'clock on Twitch and on Alpha. Uh, also, I have a show at Geek and Sundry called uh, Key Question, where we we actually discussed Harley Quinn and uh, a few other DC characters over there. And that's a great show. We do like a philosophical pop culture deep dive. Um, and uh, yeah, at the Matt Key on Twitter. Very cool. Well, I want to thank Amy and Matt for stopping by today, leaving behind all their blood, sweat, and tears. We're going to need a mop and bucket over here. So thank you to all for watching. Tune in to next week's Versus Live to find out who won this battle and for an all new showdown. I am Sam the Hammer Humphreys. You can find me on Twitter at Sam Humphreys. Thank you so much. See you next time. <laughs>